Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jacula. And we just watched, well, technically, we yesterday watched uh, Deadpool, the new, uh, well, I guess it's technically a Fox movie, but for, technically all, a Fox movie, for all intents yeah. and purposes, it's another one of the Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not part of the MCU, but... Not, yeah, not part of the MCU, but definitely it's got, like, it starts with the Marvel logo, because it's yeah. Marvel characters. Yeah, and when you also get the vibe that lately Marvel has started to have more input in the stuff that other companies produce of their works lately. Yeah, well, like, how to put it, like, it's very interesting, because... You've got the regular Marvel MCU, and then you've got the the X universe, like the mutant yeah, universe, yeah, which is and the Fox one. Yeah, yeah, and Fox seems to be a bit uh, is finally getting on like the uh, the extended universe bandwagon. Yep, and are putting and they all tried, their they, mutant properties together. They wanted to do that with Fantastic Four, but it, it was balls. Yeah, they were going to do that <laughs> with Fantastic Four, but that movie sucked so hard. It's oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but good news is. Daredevil. Uh, D Deadpool. Daredevil. Deadpool. Deadpool, not Daredevil. Other red guy. <laughs> Deadpool is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, Deadpool's great. Um, if you're a fan of Deadpool and you like his wacky, crazy sense of humor, his fourth wall breaking, his pop culture references, his tendency just to be so gloriously unpolitically correct, then this movie pretty much nails it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it nails everything. Um, yeah. About the only thing they don't do is his relationship with death. Yeah, yeah. Because that would have been too expensive. Yeah, but basically bringing the character of death to life and the question of whether or not they even have the rights to death. Yeah, yeah, that's a really that, good question, That actually. might be tied in with another property. Like, Yeah, yeah, it could be tied in with Guardians. It could be tied in with... It could also be tied in with uh, Ghost Rider. Um, or, oh, yeah, that's more likely. Yeah, yeah it's more um, likely it's tied in with Ghost Rider. Or even Doctor Strange. Like, there's... there's just... Well, Marvel MCU has Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, well, I mean, if... oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So yeah, there's a. It's still a different studio. It's so hard to. It's, it's complicated. It's, yeah. All these universes are fucking complicated. in The continuities. They even make jokes about that in this movie. It's yep. great. Yep, they sure do. Um, uh, uh, they the only thing they really do with Deadpool that is a little different is they they tone him down just slightly enough so that he can be a coherent protagonist when he needs to be. Yeah. Um, because otherwise you literally have no story if he's just going around. Yeah, yeah. If he's just doing <laughs> random shit for no reason. Yeah. He like he does in the comic half the time like that's not a movie yeah yeah you, you needed him to actually be invested in something yeah and you needed to be invested in him being invested in something so they actually created this love story with him and uh a copycat from the comics but yeah, yeah. she's not called yeah, that she, she doesn't turn become copycat at the end of this movie she's yeah. just it's just that person yeah yeah that that character um which they, they hey they could give her the powers i mean yeah yeah she could turn out to have powers along yeah. she could get powers later absolutely because of the way they set up the way people mutate absolutely so they establish this romance between them and that's kind of like the anchor that gives the movie an actual emotional center so that you're it's not just like random shit happening with yeah. no real rhyme or reason um but even then, like, Deadpool is still acting like Deadpool throughout this whole thing. He is murdering motherfuckers. He is breaking the fourth wall. He is throwing out random pop culture references and one-liners out of nowhere. He's just randomly, like, stopping in the middle of an action scene, like, huh. I think I left the stove on. Like, just, like, yeah, random yeah, yeah. shit just like that. Yeah, dumb shit. <laughs> just random shit. You know? You know? And all the shit you saw in the trailers, he like... does all the fourth wall breaking. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There's even, there's even a great joke where where, it's, where he breaks the fourth wall within the fourth wall, which is it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Did I just break the fourth wall in a flashback in another fourth wall reference? It's like 16 walls. <laughs> yeah. It's great. So basically, we 100% recommend this movie for yeah, absolutely. Deadpool fans. If you're a fan of R-rated action movies with a lot of blood and like may bloodshed and mayhem, then this movie will definitely be up your alley. Um, if you like action comedies, this is a great action comedy. Yeah, if you just like Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. This is Ryan yeah. Reynolds' showcase. Like, Oh, yeah. This is the Ryan Reynolds that we all kind of wanted back when he was doing comedies before he tried to become an action star and th th this is finally him shining at his yeah best. yeah this is very few actors get the kind of opportunity and a character so suited for them as right Reynolds. absolutely this is perfect and it completely makes up for that x-men origins wolverine so well, even fucking fox studios kind of disowned yeah. that fucking movie and they totally trash it in this movie which yeah. is great 
Because once again, they could break the fourth wall. It's Deadpool. So yeah, um, highly recommend it. It's fucking awesome. And I think now we should probably just get into the spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, so where do we start here? Um, oh, geez. Okay, so you probably know this part of the part, part from the uh, trailer, which is Deadpool gets cancer, goes yes. to a very kind of shady doctor... He calls Agent Smith, and then there's, like, this one guy named Ajax, who's, like, the actual scientist. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who I'm pretty sure is a guy they made up. I, I don't know. He might be from the comics. I'm not familiar with Ajax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a few, there were a few moments where I thought for sure they were going to bring up Genosha, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, like, because, like, I'm like, wait, the slave collars, mm -hmm. the experimentation... All this technology, this is all from Genosha plots from the comic. Yeah. Are they going to straight up bring Genosha up? You know, and like, because I'm pretty sure that uh, one of the characters that's in the movie Negasonic Teenage Warhead is from Genosha. Oh, nice, nice. You know, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure which, she's Genosha. Hey, Negasonic Teenage Warhead is in this movie. Yeah, which yeah. Is... Which is a really <laughs> odd choice because she hasn't been set up in anything else. She's just there. Well, it felt like basically it's just like, well, what characters can we use? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, that, that that no one else. What, is what characters are the X Men movies not using right now? Well, they're not really using Colossus. And uh, okay, what about this character? Because they yeah. couldn't even use Jubilee, which would have been the the go to for Moody Teenager. Yeah, yeah, and, you could gone for Jubilee, or if you kid. wanted to go like old school New Mutants, you would have gone with like Cannonball or Skids. Yeah, yeah, but they know? couldn't with Jubilee because she's going to be in Apocalypse, so they couldn't. Yeah, yeah, so you can't that. fuck with that character. And because they were, uh, Colossus was put off the reins for the first time, we get to see We get Colossus. the real Colossus. The Russian goody two-shoes, just man of steel. Like, literal yeah, yeah, steel. literal man of steel. You know, we finally you know? get that, and it is, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, he's the perfect, they made him the perfect foil for fucking He's, he's practically like Deadpool's, like, big brother in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, he is. <laughs> Because the whole story is that, like, is that Colossus believes that Deadpool is straight up mutant because yeah. what else would he be? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he wants him to join the X Men, and he believes that there is good in Deadpool. He believes that Deadpool has the potential to be a hero if he just did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Deadpool don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Deadpool is an antihero. He's not. He's barely an antihero. He's at. He's. He's usually a psychotic fucking crazy person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and at best, he's an antihero. Yeah, yeah. He occupies that same space that, like, characters like Lobo yeah, yeah. fucking occupy, which is you're like, is this guy's not a good guy, but I just love watching him do dumb shit. Absolutely. You know? But for the purposes of this movie, they went with the antihero version because you need to root for someone. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get behind Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. So he's gotta be a little nicer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but they don't, they didn't ruin him, which was what I was No, really no, he was of. so Deadpool. Like, so dead on Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. As, as close Even as... before Wade gets turned into Deadpool, like, you're looking at Ryan Reynolds playing Wade Wilson, the man, and you're like, no, this is totally Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, he's already Deadpool. His powers are just formality. <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's it's less that he's crazy <clears throat> so much as it's back to just the Merc with the mouth idea. But he is still, like, breaking the fourth wall and doing a lot of those crazy things. But, like, he's, he's less completely psychotic like he is in some versions of the comic. Yeah, well, the movie opens up with a fourth wall break because yeah. the title sequence <laughs> is written by Deadpool. Yes, the title sequence that pops up is like, uh, what what is it like? Like directed by an asshole. Directed or... by an asshole. <laughs> produced by some jerks in Hollywood. Yeah. Starring the sexiest man alive. <laughs> and and shit a CGI like character, a moody teenager. It's just, yeah, a British villain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like... written by the real heroes of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and and more power. To, that that was actually very accurate because the writing of this movie. You could tell that they had to work within, and it turns out, reading afterwards, they yeah. did have to work within some really ridiculous um, budgetary restrictions while working on this movie, with the budget being cut as they're working on it. 
And so the writers just having to kept coming up, having to come up with these ingenious solutions to problems. Yeah, working around the clock to problems that had come up like in shooting that day. Yeah. Like there was like a scene that I read about that um in the in there originally at the end of this movie there was supposed to be a much bigger gunfight. There as it is, there's this really awesome sword fight where he's like chopping off all these guys heads and shit and it's really cool. But there was supposed to be this gigantic gun battle there where he's just picking off people like left and right and there's supposed to be like a hundred men. But their budget got cut like as they started production, so they had to rewrite the script, and out of that came this solution that ended up becoming one of the best scenes in the movie, yeah. in my opinion, where Deadpool gathers up all these guns, puts it in a duffel bag, takes a cab to go beat the bad guys, which is a run-on joke that he yeah. takes cabs to go beat the bad guys, <laughs> and gets out of the cab, does the cool walk with it with, with Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead to go meet up with the bad guys, and mid-walk, Negasonic Teenage Warhead realizes, hey, Wade, where's your bag? Oh shit. And, yeah, he like, yeah. and he has to call the cabbie, and she's like, I left my bag there, whatever, and the cabbie gets in an accident. So he's like, well, well I guess I have to go old school with my swords. And... <laughs> Um, and, and, and ended up creating a really great moment, a really great Deadpool moment that is one of the more memorable moments of the movie, but it was spawned out of a, rest a restriction that they had. Yeah, yeah, because they couldn't afford the gunfire. You know, and yeah. so, like, th truly, the writers of this movie are the real heroes because they, they were able to fix things like that on the spot and just... I, I am in awe of that. Yeah, just, absolutely. A lesser movie and with lesser production could have completely fallen apart with that kind of shit happening. Yeah, and the fu the funny thing is, is this is a this is like a uh, mid. You could tell it's a, like a mid budget feature. Yeah, yeah. You could definitely tell that the rare it, mid budget feature. Yeah, the rare mid budget feature that costs like only like forty sixty Something mil. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Probably like pro probably closer to sixty with uh with uh marketing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like the thing that and 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 there are some spots that you can kind of tell that that's true because there are only so many locations in the movie. Yeah, you know, there are like I think like five or six locations. Yeah, yeah. You have like you have his his initial apartment. Yeah, his initial you have apartment. The, you the have bar. The bar. You have the bad guy's lab. Yeah. Um. You have his second apartment. Yeah. Um, and then you have the location of the final battle. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like uh, and like one street. street yeah, fight. yeah, and the fight on the bridge. Yeah, yeah. So that's it's about six. Yeah, yeah. Not many locations, but you you really don't even notice while you're watching it because you're so engaged. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The one pro, the one moment where like you get really confused if you're a Marvel, even if you're just a Marvel movie fan, mm -hmm. is that. They're fighting on a decommissioned battleship. Yeah, and for an it, for a bit, you're trying to figure out whether it's a Hella Harrier, Shield Hella Harrier. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, wait, that that because, can't be because right. It That's looks, a completely different. Yeah, yeah, but it looks like it. They're in New York, and it looks super high you tech. Know? Yeah, like way more high tech than a normal like aircraft carrier. So I was like, uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah. that was thrown in there as an Easter egg. Like it could be. It could like, be, I don't it know. Could be a, a metric fuck ton of things. Um, and oh man, God, there's just so many great moments in this movie, and and like we're not even like going through it plot point by plot point because it's it, it's a very it's a very basic superhero origin story, um, but with the most irreverent main character possible at the center of it. Yeah, and yeah. that's what makes it good. Like, like if you're going into this for the most complex story, you're going to be disappointed because it's not a complex story. It's a very simple story, but that's all it needs. Yeah, but mm -hmm. one of the things I thought was so interesting that the writers did mm -hmm. was when I first saw Colossus, I was like, oh, like that's going to be great. Russian Colossus is amazing. Yeah. But I thought about it, and I'm like, oh, shit, how are you going to explain that for anybody who's not up yeah. on Marvel shit, and then the but not real, but the writers realized they didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, you they didn't have the to. You're right like, away. he's he's all right. There's super beings. There are a bunch of them at a school. One of them is a guy that's made of metal. Yep, done. Yeah. Absolutely, that's all you need to know. And everything else about Colossus just comes across through the character. Yeah, yeah, and 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 they kind of use the Negasonic Teenage Warhead as like an example of how. Apparently, Colossus just takes these these mutants under his wing. Yeah, yeah, he just like, takes to care of them. them. Yeah, and tries to guide them like a Big Brother program kind of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, and he's trying to do that with Wade the whole time, but Wade is just like complete opposite of Colossus. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't work. There's this great moment towards the end of the movie where he's got the bad guy and he's got the gun on his head, 
And it's like, oh man, is he going to kill him? Is he going to shoot him? And like, Colossus gives this big speech about how there's like four or five moments where you really get to truly see what kind of hero you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, and one of those moments is right now, if you spare that man, before he even finishes the sentence, Deadpool just kills him. It's like, you were just droning on, man. Like, yeah. you were going on <laughs> and on. And Colossus just turns around and like, why did you do that? And just starts throwing up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great scene. Um, oh. I love the bar in this movie that, oh, the bar is great. that yeah. Wade works at as a mercenary before he becomes Deadpool. And it's basically just like a biker ball full, bar full of miscreants and like low yeah. lives. Like T.J. Miller is the bartender. Yes, yeah. yes. Having a, having a fucking ball. Because here's the amazing thing about T.J. Miller in this movie. He is the comedic sidekick to a character who is practically his own comedic sidekick. So there's like no straight man outside of Colossus in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> It's like Colossus and the villain and maybe his girlfriend, but even his girlfriend has about as much of a mouth as he does. So. Yes. So, like, there's really Colossus and the villain as the two straight men of the movie. Yeah, yeah, but, but like, <laughs> T.J. Miller is able to parallel Deadpool just because he's, like, He's deadpan. Chill. Yeah, he's so deadpan humorous. Like, like, like th and that's how it works because they're both com comedic relief, but what makes T.J. Miller a good foil for... Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool is that Deadpool is just crazy and wacky all over the place and loud. Whereas T.J. Miller is very quiet, understated, and deadpan. Yeah. But everything he says is a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like it, was, it was, I think this was in one of the trailers with that whole thing about, like, I'd go with you, Wade, but I don't want to. <laughs> yes. Or like that entire like they like there's just there's a bit the bit this is in the trailer but it's extended in the movie where it's just like your face looks like a guacamole fucked a other uglier guacamole and just created guacamole much like, it's just, like it just goes on this fucking like <laughs> yeah yeah he just keeps going and he's like all right I get I get it I, yeah, yeah. yeah and I apologize for any misquotes I do for the movie I only saw the movie once and I want to see it again but it's probably gonna yeah, be yeah it's a while. really good yeah yeah it's <laughs> well, it's it's good it's one of them Blu-ray. Almost oh, definitely, God. I want to oh, have this one. I want because this is right up my alley. Because I love superhero movies, but my heart goes into the hard R, fucking irreverent, oh yeah, bloody, yeah, violent absolutely, movies. absolutely. And this movie isn't like say Turbo Kid with like just blood upon blood. But there's enough here to where you're going like, man, I miss when movies were just allowed to do this. Like, yeah, like there's this great scene where he's like shooting up these guys in this car, and there's like a motorcycle guy, and like. He, the motorcycle guy's head gets cut off by his by the chain on the motorcycle while the car's tumbling, and yeah. this and this other guy smashes into the sign by flying over the car and like well yeah yeah they did that same joke that the fucking Green Inferno did yeah yeah which is it it he <laughs> finally smears <laughs> off of the sign and at smacks a in the background moment. it's a great that guy moment. was dead before I got here yes. <laughs> Oh man, like this is a this is a fucking fun fucking movie. Look at the relationship between him and that cab driver who's always picking him off. Oh my god, a cab driver who's just like, oh man, he's like totally in love with this girl, but like, uh, there's this man that is that's in his way, and so Deadpool's like encouraging him to kill the man. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Kill, kill his brother, take the girl, and eventually he ends up in the cab with Colossus. And of course, and and they don't make Colossus little. He had to be CGI. He's huge. He's he's Colossus as visualized in the comic. He's like ten feet tall. Yeah, he is huge. five feet wide. Gigantic dude. They got him squished in the back of this fucking cab, and he's like drinking a coke. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, through a straw. You and know? they hit like a bump, and they hear like a yelp in the trunk. And Dibble's like, "What's that?" <laughs> and, and the guy like admits to it. Kidnapping. kidnapping his brother-in-law yeah. and got him in the trunk. And, and it's like, I did what you told me to do. And, and, it, and Quas is like, what? And then Deadpool's like, no, I didn't say that. I, I didn't, didn't say that. that. I'm I didn't so say... proud of you. Yeah. I'm, so... I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you should go, you should man up and just let her know what your feelings are. A kidnapper. <laughs> you know? Like... <laughs> so oh, fuck fucked you. up and awesome. <laughs> This, oh, this, movie, this movie, I needed this movie. This yeah, is yeah. Great. And then the other did. thing is, is that it came out on Valentine's Day, and it's actually a surprise. It actually is a love story. Movie. Yeah, yeah. Like him, him and his love interest in this movie. Like that, you you buy their chemistry. Oh yeah. You yeah. buy that they'd be totally one hundred percent into you, and you'd buy that Deadpool will go out of his way to slaughter every motherfucker in the room to get to her. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. <laughs> you know. No fucking doubt. And you also buy that, like. She would still be into him despite him doing that. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like it, it, it's 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 they created they had this they had they found they turned copycat or rather the person who becomes copycat eventually um into kind of the perfect person to just yeah, yeah. Be in a relationship with Deadpool. Absolutely. She's the prostitute with the mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and not not in the other sense of the mouth. But oh, like, I, think... oh. <laughs> I, I mean I mean in the Deadpool sense of the mouth. Yeah. You know, so they're Spit. like they're like spitballing back and forth with one another. And they have this great montage where they're just fucking on various holidays. And it keeps escalating to the point where like she's like porking him in the back. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking him in the ass with a strap yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I forget, it's like, yeah, International Women's Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's like there's like a there's like Thanksgiving and she's like sh- she's like covering his face in like 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 uh smashed potatoes. Yeah. Um, there's a point where he like goes to propose to her, but 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 uh, she think they think that they're on the same page, and he thinks that she that she she knows he's about to propose, but she is about to offer him her ass. Like yeah, <laughs> it's just it's great. It is a great romance. They are legitimately great together, and like I kind of hope she does get the copycat powers in the sequel and just kind of starts joining him on his adventures. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Like you're gonna have you're gonna have this potential. It depends on how they want to do it because. One of the problems with Copycat being in the universe that she's in is Mystique. Yeah. Because she's essentially got Mystique's powers. Yes. You know, and But if she's in the Deadpool movies, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. If you don't if she if they're if they're not gonna really super interact, it's it's not gonna be a problem. Yeah. You know, or if you find something fun to do with, with that. Well, I mean, I think Deadpool could think of a million things she could do with those powers. <laughs> no, no, I meant I meant with Copycat meeting Mystique. Oh yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You could, <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. Oh man, it was a really good movie. Yeah, I love it's so much fun. I, um, oh jeez, fucking. There was just God. I'm trying to remember what this moment, what that fucking moment was. It was a moment. I was like, I really want to talk about this. Oh hey buddy, hey buddy. You want oh, up here? Squeaky cat. You want kitty? kitty. Look what we found. Oh, what we found. We, we found, found. It's Gomez. Gomez, you little bastard. The crazy cat. He's kind of like Deadpool in cat form. He just kills everything. Yeah, he just kills. He doesn't hate. He just kills. Bye, kitty. Uh, oh, fucking, the movie was great. Al was great. It was fucking great. Everyone was great. Look, look, if you haven't seen Deadpool yet, which, based on the box office records, I guarantee most of you have. Yeah, most of you have. You just wanted to see But if you haven't, was, and you're oh, on the shit. fence, especially if you're a Deadpool fan and you were kind of on the fence because you didn't want to, you didn't want your heart broken, don't worry. It will oh, not yeah, be broken. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. You're, this is this is the movie you've been waiting for. This is every... This is, this is a, a restoration. Ba- basically... Uh, fucking some bitch, uh, fucking picked up your heart with Wolverine Origins and threw it on the floor and took a shit on it and fucking made you feel worthless. So you crawled off to die in a small hole. And then some other beautiful, insane woman came along and healed your heart as this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good analogy. Good yeah, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> fucking, oh man. God damn. It was really funny. Like there's, there's been this kind of, a uh, uh, minor discussion happening in the wake of Deadpool, uh, started by James Gunn. Actually, he mm-hmm. was like, "Everyone's going to take the wrong lesson from Deadpool." Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like they're going to greenlight R-rated, which is already started. Yeah, yeah, which is already started. Like, like Spawn, absolutely right. Spawn just got greenlit, and an R-rated X Force just got greenlit. Um, based on what I was reading earlier today. So. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's really weird. It depends on which version of X Force they do. Yeah, like if they do the version of X Force. That actually had Cable and Deadpool in it at the same mm-hmm. time, then I can see that one being R rated. Yeah, yeah. The problem I have with that is that X Force came out of New Mutants, mm-hmm. and New Mutants is one of those things where I'm like, no, 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 New Mutants needs to be PG thirteen pushing into R as opposed to a hard R. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you made New Mutants like just straight PG, I think that would be a terrible idea. But it's mm-hmm. got to be PG thirteen. Moving okay. into our territory. X-Force, on the other hand, um, if you did the period of time where they were just fucking straight up killing motherfuckers, that needs to be R. There's just one problem, which is those comics kind of suck. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if... Like, no, I'm sorry. X-Force sucked. That comic sucked. Mm-hmm. You know? it Never it, read it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's got all the classic problems of a Rob Liefeld comic, which are... Oh, it's really violent and sort and you know adult, and it's got that kind of you know manly and you know exaggerated anatomy bad art style. 
problem is the writing's not there. And he was in charge of everything. Mm. And so you're like, uh, this is kind of balls. Mm. And the, the comic lasted for a while just based on pure inertia, but it was never a good comic. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like... Uh, someone suggested, I think it was Ken Newman, the writer of Anna Dracula, he's like, they should do a G-rated Squirrel Girl movie. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You need to do an R-rated Squirrel Girl movie, but Squirrel Girl herself is is G. Like, so you have this really, like, cutesy, daffy character in this completely insane, violent male That could be fun. You know? Um, that could be fun. Because I think Squirrel Girl's okay, but the thing that was kind of interesting about her was that she is this kind of super cutesy girl who is able to defeat some of the more powerful members of the Marvel Universe. So, in order to do that, Without, like, actually, if they did bring her in, they could use Doctor Doom, but they would have to make Doctor Doom again. Mm-hmm. That'd be, that'd be, I'd be okay with that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. If you did just, did, just did Squirrel Girl G, that would be like, who cares? Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. You gotta, you gotta be a little weirder about it. Anyway, that's not Deadpool. <laughs> Point is, um, Deadpool's def- great. Definitely, definitely fucking see Deadpool. That's, that's the end of the discussion. If you don't see Deadpool, I don't want to fucking know you. Go see it. 